Greetings, Internet! I am Ken from the Computer Clan, and today on Tidbytes, we're going to take a look at Final Cut Pro 10.3. I will say there are a couple of great features inside of this editor that you won't really be able to see in this demo because they require specific hardware. For example, the touch bar allows you to interact with Final Cut Pro in new ways, but you need the new MacBook Pro to do that. 10.3 also supports native wide color and Rec 2020, but you need a display like on the new iMac or the new MacBook Pro that has P3 so you can see those colors. But just know those features are there. So now let's dive in. As you can see, the interface does look new. It is darker, it is flatter, it matches Apple's new designs a lot better than the last one. A couple of things got relocated. For example, you used to get to your music and to your generators and titles down here. Now all of that is up here in these two little buttons. And you can also get a nice big browser to go through this stuff now, so you have more space to navigate. There's also some nice new toggles for your workspace. So let's say I'm editing and I need to hide and show stuff easily. I can just click this to hide the browser, this to hide the timeline, or this to hide the inspector. There's also a new button here for second displays. You can choose what item you want to go on your second display. For example, I want to move the timeline over there. And then when you click this button on and off, it moves the timeline away from your main display and onto your secondary display. There are also new workspace presets and a new workspaces menu. You can save your own workspaces with your own names, or you can use the built-in workspaces like color and effects, and I get my color scopes and all that nice stuff, and then when I'm done, I can go back to my default layout just like that. So all of that is now built into 10.3 with Final Cut. All right, let's take a look at the timeline. You spend a lot of time down here, right? So the magnetic timeline was introduced in Final Cut Pro 10. It's what allows you to move things and have stuff stay connected and stay in sync and just swap things. It just works pretty natural compared to a track-based editor. Well, one nice change has to do with our roles. We had roles in the last version of Final Cut Pro, but there's some nice changes. For example, audio lanes. My music, effects, and dialogue are separated into these lanes. So, if I was moving stuff around, like this effect, I can, you know, move it around in time, but if I moved it down here, it'll bounce back up because it's like, uh-oh, that's not the right lane for that. To stay organized, I'm going to keep your effects up here, which is exactly what it did. That's the lane it falls under. You'll notice the audio lanes even shows me audio separated from other clips. So, for example, there's audio in this clip right here, but when I show the audio lanes, it detaches it so I can work with it in some different ways. You will see the rolls also have new colors, and you can change these colors. By hitting Edit Rolls, I can actually assign different colors. For example, my music, let's say for some reason I want that to be purple. I can do that, and now my music is purple. Not deep purple, different kind of music. But anyway, that is now an option. You can also change your focus on rolls. Let's say I just want to focus on the music. I click this little circle and everything else gets really thin, saving a lot of space on your screen. Another nice feature in Magnetic Timeline 2 is the ability to roll trim adjacent connected clips. Earlier, if I wanted to roll trim this, I would need to have these into their own storyline, press T, and then adjust. Well, no longer. With Magnetic Timeline 2, I can just press T and adjust these clips. I just performed a roll trim without having to throw them into a storyline, so that is very handy. Let's take a look at the updated inspector. For the most part, not much has changed, but it does have the new interface, which is pretty. And there's new icons up here instead of text labels. So if I wanted to, let's say, work with my text more, I would be in the text mode here. And, you know, I have all these parameters that I'm constantly scrolling back and forth between, and it can get kind of annoying. If you double click the top of the inspector, and now takes up this nice sidebar here so I have a lot more space. So if I expand all of my controls, I can see everything and I don't need to keep scrolling up and down and up and down. It's just all right there, super simple. And when I'm done, I just double click again and the inspector collapses. Let's take a look at remove attributes. So let's say I had an effect going on with these three clips. I have a time code display here and I'm gonna reposition it and be like, okay, I want my time code here, I'm gonna copy and paste that effect onto all these clips. So I use that handy panel that we've had for a while to easily duplicate effects among multiple clips. But let's say later down the line, how do I undo that? I can't just keep stepping back with Command Z, it's way too late. Well, 
You could select them all and disable them in the inspector, but now there's a new Remove Attributes panel. So I'll have all the clips selected, go to Edit, Remove Attributes, and let's say I don't want to affect the retiming, I don't want to affect the stabilization, but I do want to get rid of that time code. I'll leave that checked. One click and boom, all the clips now have that effect removed. Now let's take a look at a new transition, the flow transition. It works a lot like the morph cut inside of Adobe Premiere. So let's take a look at this jump cut here. As you can see, there's a little cut and it's not perfectly smooth because it was one camera angle, one piece of footage with stuff cut out in between. So the flow transition, let's just type in flow, can help make those jump cuts more smooth by morphing the frames. So I'll apply that and it doesn't need to do any analysis. I don't have to wait. It's just boom, done, ready. And now when I play, it is a lot smoother than that jump cut. So the flow transition is very handy. Here's another handy feature. Let's say I want to review all these clips. Well, originally, if I was playing a video and the playhead reached the end of the clip, party's over, it would stop. But I have a new checkbox on called continuous playback. So now when I'm playing clips in the browser, one will jump from the other. So when that clip ends, the next clip begins. Even when I'm fast forwarding, I can just jump from clip to clip to clip, no matter where, and not skip a beat. So that is a quick look at some of the new features in Final Cut Pro 10.3. There's a lot of others and I encourage you to look at them on Apple's website and Apple also has some other examples of how you can see it in action. Final Cut Pro can be purchased from the App Store for $2.99 USD and there is a 30 day free trial. If you already have Final Cut Pro, this entire update is free of charge. And don't forget, for more compatibility, there is a new Pro Formats update that also came out with this version of Final Cut Pro. Motion and Compressor have also been updated. If you liked this demo, feel free to leave a like down below. And if you have any questions or comments, don't be a stranger. Let us know in the comment section below. Happy editing, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the not too distant future. Hey guys, if you want to get some laughs out of us, I recommend Ken Cinema of Shenanigans. Just click here. But I also recommend Crazy Ken's Tech Misadventures. It is chuck full of tech mishaps and some fun times.